everybody! Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back! Thanks for tuning in, joining us, watching or listening, wherever you're doing it, how you're doing it, on the podcast app, on SoundCloud, on YouTube, any one of those three places. And as always, our contact links, right down there. Uh, over there, we discussed that last time. Or the time before, I don't remember. They're, they're there if you want to talk there. to us. Just for any us. reason. Yeah. I, um, I accept all reasons. <clears throat> All reasons? Yeah. Like, hey, we want to hang out with you. That's cool. I'll have that conversation. It's going to be no, but... Yeah, that'd be a little weird. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> Guys, we have a very cool episode for you today. We talked last week about sort of our first look into Ixalan. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't gotten to play with the set, obviously, quite no. yet. Um, although the pre-release was this past weekend. Yeah. So, hopefully... Actually, as we record it, as we were recording this, there might still be one happening. There probably is, um, yeah. but if any of you guys did go out and play, uh, we want to hear your story. So yeah, if absolutely. you did well, let us know. If you didn't do well, let us know too, because we lie. Pad will... your stats a bit, but tell us. Yeah, <laughs> lie. That'll be fine. Um, <laughs> no, but today we're going to look at Ixalan in the form of modern. We want to look mm -hmm. at some of the cards that uh, we think might actually hit modern, because yeah. I do think there are a few in here. Um, some of them are a bit sort of on the fence, so we'll see as things play out. Yeah. But uh, there are definitely at least two that I think are like 100% going to hit modern. Um, I, I agree. Potentially least, three. Yeah. Um, but we also have, of course, our card of the day, our question of the week, our sponsor, and our packs, all that normal stuff. Absolutely. Um, I think before we do the card of the day, we'll give a quick shout out uh, to Project Peanuts. Uh, Welcome to Project Peanuts. I am Peanut. And my channel is all about Magic the Gathering, trading card game. Yeah. Uh, they also like alliteration. Um, he won our giveaway. If you didn't know, uh, we had a giveaway going on last week. All you had to do yeah. was subscribe to our channel, uh, as well as like a video, just whichever video you liked, and um, you'd be entered to win. And we had huge, huge turnouts for that, actually. Yeah. We got a we, lot of responses. Yeah. We and appreciate all of them. It was yeah, very cool, very cool. It was really cool to see the support. Wow. We got from like 70-ish subscribers and we jumped to like 120. So we Yay! broke that 100 mark thanks to you guys. Thank you guys so much uh, for showing your support for us. And thank you to Project Peanuts for taking part and being awesome. Yes. Uh, go check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he's bigger than us and cooler than us. Yeah, sometimes. A, he does some magic comedy stuff, <laughs> it looks like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Funny things. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we're, I'm not going to say we're more serious, but we don't attempt humor. We don't attempt humor, we don't, ever. Yeah, we don't have much variance. We're not funny. No. We're um. Not. We're not. I try we're really a lot. not. He's more funny, I think. I'm an idiot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that all being said. Let's jump into our card of the day. Uh, we will see what we get in three, two, one. Uh, Break of day. All right. Well, uh, this is on underwhelming we'll say absolutely this card sucks so it's an instant one in a white uh creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn it also has fatal hour which was a mechanic from dark ascension mm -hmm. uh if you have five or less life those creatures also gain indestructible this turn um so it's just a combat trick <laughs> Woo. Woo. just a common i mean it's decent because it gives all of your creatures in like a go wide strategy it's okay but in that's it in limited humans and in yeah limited something this is fine <laughs> in anything else real bad oh god never play this in constructed no. obviously no um, very 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 few combat tricks make it to constructed yeah for, that's true for mutagenic reasons. growth we're looking at you invigorate yeah pretty much that's best. it if it's um, not part of a combo, it really doesn't go in. If it's not an infect, you don't play it. <laughs> like, no, well, honestly, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. underwhelming. It's just a combat trick. It's okay in a go-wide limited strategy, and that's probably it. So Yeah, that's where I put my um, stamp on that. Yeah, that's, that's underwhelming. Normally, we get yeah, something kind sucks. of interesting. Uh, God, this episode's terrible. Dang it. I'm done. Take, <laughs> off, the my, take off my mic. <laughs> just remove the mic from the table. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, with that out of the way, though, we would talk more at length, but there's not much to talk about. Yeah, no. We are going to talk about Ixalan and its impact on modern potentially. Yeah, I wish I got to go out and play it mm -hmm. at pre-release this weekend, but I am, am shackled by responsibility. So, yeah. uh, nay, I say. Uh, I'll probably we'll play a few drafts eventually, yeah, but sure. I miss uh, pre-releasing. I've fun. never pre-released, actually. That's a whole new thing for me. It's a shame. Just like FNM, I did it once. 
This guy. <laughs> this guy uh, needs eternal formats. Yeah. They have modern nights. We should get them. They do have modern nights. Um, but yeah, so we thought we would pick sort of our top five cards yeah. for, from Ixalan that might hit modern. Yeah. Uh, some of these we were pretty confident about. Others were a little on the fence about, so we'll, we'll sort few. of go in and out on this. But Very few we're confident um, about. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Um, they're in no, no particular here. order. They're yes. in no particular order. I think okay. we can start at the top. Yeah, let's do that. So um, the first one we wanted to talk about is Kopala, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Warden of Waves, which if you don't know is the new Merfolk. Uh, let me get it pulled up. It's the new Merfolk legend. It's the new uh, Mer- Merfolk legend, correct. So it is one and two blue for a 2-2 legendary creature Merfolk, so you can only have one on the battlefield at a time. Uh, it states spells your opponent's cast that target merfolk you control costs two more to cast and the same thing applies to abilities as well yeah um so basically what that means is makes your merfolk really hard to kill yeah um uh we talked about it last episode a little bit yeah um how we thought that this could be in fish but it's the reason we say that so looking at the card it's a beautiful cost for fish yeah that's right around their wheelhouse kind of at their top end Mm -hmm. two two is a fine body um it, and it get, won't it's worth noting it probably won't just be a 2-2 because you right. do have lord of atlanta you know all the lords of will course be there of too. course of course and it's a great effect <laughs> that like fish players would like yeah make your fish harder to kill sweet however we did say did we not yeah. that this is most likely a sideboard card it is most likely a sideboard card because <laughs> i mean against control decks or something like that where they're going to be trying to like sort of point and shoot at your guys you'll want this right because yeah. it'll do great against that they can't really target your spells mm-hmm. as easily or if they do it's going to wipe them out for his turn that sort of a thing however against like a combo deck that just doesn't interact with you at mm-hmm. all it's useless right it just yeah. doesn't do anything and correct me um, if i'm wrong this only affects merfolk once they have resolved correct yes yeah. Okay. Um, so you have to control them is what it states. So they have to have resolved and are now on the battlefield yeah. for them to actually have this sort of tagline. And it's, it, I mean, it's a good card. It's a sideboard card mm-hmm. for sure. Um, you may see somebody main decking one or something like that, but I think one it's a two. meta call, right? Yeah, like definitely. I think if you're, if you're expecting a, a lot of decks where this would be good against it, mm-hmm. sure. Main board one or two. Yeah. Uh, if not, then have them in the sideboard. I think it's a great sideboard card for sure. Yeah. I would um, agree. But I do think, I mean, I think pretty clearly this is going to hit modern. I don't think there's really mm-hmm. too much question in that. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with that. Uh, so it performs well against a lot of cards that are big in modern right now. Obviously, Fireball. Yeah. Um, obviously, not Fireball. Lightning Bolt. Shut up, Will. Lightning Bolt. Channel Fireball. It's. I haven't <laughs> thought about magic in a week. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> I'm, Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, um, Path, things like that that you're worried about facing i guess if you're a creature deck this kind of helps with them i think you can see it against grix's death shadow for their removal stuff yeah that being said they don't have lightning bolt they do have fatal push exactly a fatal Um, push so so it does work against that i mean the thing about it is like if you're against a bolt player or a fatal push player you know what i mean like their cards now cost three instead of one, which is a huge deal. Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, in the early turns, mm-hmm. obviously, it keeps them off of doing anything, really. Yeah. And then in the later turns, they just have to sink so much mana and so much resources, so many resources, excuse me, into killing your creature yeah. that it becomes sort of a, a time walk for you in a way. Um, not mm-hmm. effectively the exact same, but I just mean, sure. like, they sort of don't get to do anything else because they're tapping out for this. So, like right that's that's just generally how it goes so it'll be a good card uh for sure but sideboard mainly yeah i believe so uh i had another point kev but i lost it i lost it it was lost in the sewers with pennywise um we haven't been talking about it we have i just saw it last friday let's tangent what'd you think of it it was great (laughs) <laughs> it was fantastic. I hate clowns. I love it. Not as in it's like, so oh no, I'm scared of clowns. As in, I oh, clowns. <laughs> You're just angry at him. I to end this tangent, I got emotionally <laughs> triggered, angry at Pennywise. If you haven't seen it, it's not a spoiler. Skip ahead a little bit. If you haven't seen it, there's a line where he says oh. <laughs> he he's about to eat this one kid, and then he gets really salty. 
He's like, I'm not real enough for you. <laughs> and then he says something about the kid he ate in the first scene, <laughs> which I was already upset about. And I wish he had just let lie, but no, he didn't. I'm about to go to Dairy. Where are they? Dairy, Pennsylvania? Dairy, where? I don't know, actually. Dairy, air? Dairy, wherever. I'm about to go to Dairy. Get me a bat with some nails in it. Just clink, clink. That scene from Warriors. Pennywise, <laughs> come out and play. I got really mad. What's also funny to me is you look like the kid that is the main character in Stranger Things, mm. and he is also the comic relief character of It. He's the best character. He's the coolest character ever, and he looks mm. like a younger you. <laughs> And he has this, of, a sense actually, of humor like you, sort of. A little. I'm so, like, much more inappropriate off camera, so yeah. Yeah, like literally, I was watching it. I saw it before you like a week or two ago. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking the entire time, oh my gosh, this is Will. <laughs> like literally the entire time. We, you make we a joke similar. and I'm like, yep, yeah, I can see Will saying that. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're similar. We're similar for sure. <laughs> and he's, great. he's the one I liked the most. Says a lot about you. <laughs> he cracked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, it, go go watch see it. it. Yeah. It's great. Uh, if you don't Not watch a it, sponsor. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by it. Sponsored by Pennywise. He pops up. <laughs> Am <laughs> I real enough for you? <laughs> oh. <sighs> Moving on. Let's All right. Number your... two on our oh, list. Dang it, um, This one is a little bit <coughs> more sort of on the fence for I think both of us. Definitely. Uh, it's the new Cradle. Uh, it Lamont Cradle of the Sun is mm-hmm. the flip side. The enchantment side is growing rights of it, Lamoc. Um, basically, it's a Gaius Cradle, yeah. but actually a little bit better. Um, Do you think so now? I think the land itself is, yes. I okay. don't. I think because of the if it wasn't needing to flip to and everything, okay. I think it still might be a little bit under for me. I can give you that. Um, but I, I do still think, think it's worth it, personally. I think it could be. So where I see this being played is Modern Elves. Um, yep. Because, first of all, you can ramp it out. You're going to have the four creatures to get it flipped pretty quickly. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's actually worthwhile, I think, in that instance. Um, other than that, I don't really see it doing too much. I know you mentioned you might see it in a zoo so, style deck. Yeah, the thought with the zoo deck, um, and there's another card we'll talk about that I think is much better for zoo, but yeah. uh, the thought with the zoo deck is you get, you try to flood with cheap creatures who get stronger based on your lands and mm-hmm. based on X, Y, whatever. Uh, it helps you search for creatures, which is your strategy, which is your mm-hmm. win con. Uh, whip those out, and then just gives you extra mana. Like that's sweet. Yeah. Like in an aggro, it's really sweet. In an aggro deck, that's kind of nice. Uh, but it is really slow for Zoo. Um, yeah. Pumping four. Is it four or three? It's four. So pumping four mana into an enchantment. Or no, I'm sorry. The enchantment is three. I thought you meant four creatures to flip it. No, sorry. no, no. You'll get that pretty easy. Most yeah. of their cheapers. Yeah, yeah. They're cheapers. Most of their creatures. <laughs> are really cheap well so i was sort of like thinking about this a little like in a zoo deck what Mm. you want to do is pile on damage after damage right right so generally what you do in a zoo deck is you just play a bunch of creatures you may have a couple burn spells or do something like that and like a naya burn kind of a thing yeah or a naya zoo deck you probably have a couple lightning bolts i mean naya burn and naya zoo are two very different they are but but even in the zoo decks you're gonna run things like lightning bolts solely because it's removal for other creatures and it's burn um and so it works in that deck Mm -hmm. and so what I don't like about the cradle mm-hmm. is that you're sort of taking time off from the main point of the deck, which is that's to true. do that damage, yeah, to sort true. of get this in, just to pump out more mana on the next turn, which hopefully you would have played more creatures anyway and then just won at that point. So, like, and maybe that's not won point, at that actually. point, but, like, gotten even closer to it. And so, like, I don't know that I ever... I don't think you'll see it No, I think No, I think you make an excellent <clears throat> point. You're absolutely right. Um you are not helping your strategy. Yeah. Really. Like, you uh, don't need to ramp in. Zoo, right, right. Right. Solely like, because all your guys are cheap. You just want to swing as fast as you can. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, you're probably right that that will not touch Zoo. I do think in Elves it's worth it because there's mm-hmm. a lot of things you can pump mana into um, to actually give either, either like, the overrun sort of effect mm-hmm. or, sure. crater I hoof. guess, Crater Hoof. Yeah. Um, things like that you'll want to do, but sure. like, and I don't think in Zoom necessarily, I guess you would do that. No, so. no, probably um, not. Unless you, I don't know, fireball them. Um, <laughs> is fireball legal in modern? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think it was printed in corsets that were after modern. 
I think so. Perhaps. I, um, I honestly don't know. I can't think of the deck. Question of the week is Fireball Mon. <laughs> we just want to know. <laughs> we have no time to Google it. Yeah. We're going to make a picture, make two <laughs> posts, put it on the internet, then talk about it, but we're not going to Google it. <laughs> Yes. How many people say yes? How many people say no? How many people say I don't know? Um, How many people say Google two? It. Apparently, yeah, I have no clue. Um, yeah. I mean, so, but I do think we might see the cradle in mm. an elf build or something along those lines. Outside yeah, of that, I don't see it. There are decks that want that effect, but yeah. not for sure. Not many. Right. Um, so, moving not on many. to the other card that you already referenced, uh, Old Growth Dryads. This one's sweet. Do you want to talk about this one then? Heck yeah. Sure. Go for it. Uh, one green for a three three. With the effect, when Old Growth Dryads enters the battlefield, each opponent may search his or her library for a basic land card, put it onto the field tapped, then shuffle his or her library. So, for Zoo... Card is good. Yeah. Um, I think the the option that Zoo players have, do I really... The, the thought, I'll say, do I really care about that extra land that they have? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, I get a 3-3 three, three for 1, <clears throat> which is really just exceptional Efficient value. and just so good. <clears throat> a Hill Giant for 3... I mean, for one, um, like that's that represents great threat. Yeah. However, here's my thought process that I just thought about. Kevin, <laughs> does it pass the litmus test? Nope. What does it die to? Does the bolt? Right. So, which worth noting, mm. bolt is on a downhill swing, but only because of fatal push, which also kills it. So it really say, doesn't matter. I was gonna say. So in thinking about that, you just potentially, yeah, depending on the deck, netted them. I know how land. <laughs> yeah. like, the land they needed huh. to kill it. Like, I don't maybe, know. Maybe. Um, I do think against it's like, risk reward, right? Against combo decks. Sure. I don't know. I think against like an ad nauseum deck. If I was playing Zoo, I don't really care if they get the extra land. Personally, I don't know. I I also mm. don't think ad nauseum yeah. plays that many basics. Mm. I might be wrong, but I think it plays a lot of the scry lands. Yeah. I mean, there's one or two just to round out just curves. Just for sometimes. Blood Moon and things yeah, like that. But... Most people are going to run basics <laughs> for me. Blood Moon, but like, right. you know, a lot of times decks don't have tons of uh, basics. I wish we'd, I wish I'd thought a little more about this. I still think this is worthwhile in certain situations. I think this will maybe see some play. Um, putting your opponent a turn ahead is definitely a huge drawback, but if you're trying to kill them within the first few turns, it doesn't really matter that sure. much anyway. I mean, depending. I think against a control deck, hear me out. Yeah. A control deck is fine, because all they do is land go. Yeah. They'll get their land, they'll have their spells, either they have it or they don't. The yeah. land really, you, you can't, you can't, you can't assume that they cannot cast their things. You always have yeah. to think that they have, have it. So they have it. while you give them that extra mana, sure, play that they have it anyway and make them have it. Right? We talked about that a yeah. while ago. Um, so I think against control decks, like your, I guess, classic Grixis. Mm -hmm. um, even that being said, removal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your Grixis, Esper, uh, blue-white, American. Um, I think it's probably fine. Yeah. Uh, three damage is nice. On, a, so, on turn one, potentially. Here's the worst case scenario with this card, though, <clears throat> which I'm just putting to you because I think it would feel bad and I want you to understand this. Okay, talk to me. You're, you have your opening hand, mm. okay? This is one of a few creatures in your hand. Okay. Your opponent, mm. uh, say you play first, you play a land, you play, we'll say a curd ape, something like that. Naya Zoo, right? <laughs> <laughs> you play a curd ape. Get him. On the, the opponent's turn, they uh -huh. play land, yeah. pass. Okay. Sure, normal, control, thing, whatever. Makes you sense. play your other creature on your next turn, sure, whatever. Then they go, okay? okay? They don't play a land on their turn, too. The only other creature you have in your hand is this guy. Do um. you play it? Huh. That is a... A little quite, interesting, isn't it? Quite the. I mean, what do you do? Like, I would assume probably not, because if they're mana screwed, you kind of just want them to be mana screwed, <laughs> especially on one, right? Oh, like jeepers. I think if you get into like they have two lands, they have three lands. Mm. It gets to the point where you just play it because who cares? But like, I think at one land you don't play it. Yeah. Right. You don't know say. Okay, go for it. How did I build that zoo deck that? Three of my 
seven opening cards. <laughs> like, I've got two creatures. What else am I holding? No, no, I know, I know. But still. It's unrealistic, Still, I still, still. But, like, in the terms just of, throwing it out the, as a possibility. In the you terms know? of the hypothetical, I don't think so. You don't play it, right? Probably like, you not. can't. I don't want to risk that. No. That, so, it comes to me. All right. <laughs> My thought process is their mana screwed. They get to play a land, shuffle their deck, mm-hmm. perhaps get out of it. Although they could draw another land next turn anyway. That's All, the question, right? Like, right. Like, let's say they they don't, and they're still just on two, which is it's good. Yeah. And I've got my what is now a three two curd ape and a three three dryad. Yeah. Which is really good. I mean, it's like, do you advance your clock on them, or do you advance their their potential to deal with your clock against them? Is sort of what it comes down to. You know what I mean? But I don't think you play it. It, it depends, like how many lands they already have on the field. Yeah. In my opinion, if they have one land on the field, you do not play this. I don't think because that gives them two. That opens up remand, which yeah. is a huge tempo play in their favor. That opens up mana leak. That opens up a lot more stuff. Sure. With uh if they're on two lands or maybe three lands three i think you just play it two i think it's a little on the fence Mm. Um, well i mean you you give them tempo the next turn for sure this but they also draw a card it gives them more chances to draw out of it is what i'm saying i mean yes along with the Eh. tempo you know what i mean i mean not not more chances it's just an easier board state i guess a stronger board state um i don't think you play it on one though I mean, it, it's that risk reward question yeah. again. Does the reward outweigh the risk? I don't know. Play it could in you, modern. Make us correct. That way we can find out. Could you represent enough damage on board that, that it would make it worth it? Like, let's say you had Kurt Ape. That's a good point. You have to assume where life totals are at as well. I mean, well, I'm saying in the beginning. So you oh. got your Kurt Ape, you're holding this guy. Mm-hmm. If you've got things like, ah, oh, what's his name? Here we go again. Uh, da, 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 da. He is a hybrid red green guy. Burning tree in the sky. Thank you. Some of those guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, turn one, Kurt Ape. Yeah. Turn two, Burning Tree, Dryad, Kurt Ape. That'd be sweet. Is that strong enough to play it? I would do it, I think. Because that just represents so much. Right. Damage. Like, I think if you're just playing this, no, that's not worth it. But if you can. If you have other things. If you can flood sure. the board and represent more threat. Because they're not going to, like, sweep you on turn two. No. Unless well, they're they'd be, main decking Pyroclasm. And they'd, which... be, they'd be three. At worst case scenario, they'd be three. But if <laughs> I... Thought last reckoning. Ooh. <laughs> in modern. <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, did, that, anyway. did anyone play that in modern? Has anyone played it yet? I don't think so. I wouldn't. That's I would. crazy. Um, when you've got Damnation, like... Yeah. Just wait mm. a turn, and then you don't have to lose a turn. <laughs> like, that Bantu's, seems better. Bantu's cost six, ultimately. Remember yeah, that, everybody. if you think about it, it sort of does. Okay, well, I'll, well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes no. If you get your lands untapped somehow, yeah, they just don't. Un- never mind. Don't play it. <laughs> um, all right, moving to the last two. Which one do you want to do first? The actual good one or the one that we're really skeptical about? The skeptical one. All right, cool. Just to. So this one is interesting. Um, Jace, <laughs> hear hear me out on this because yeah. we talked about this at length last time. Uh-huh. Doubling season. Huh. Loves this card. <laughs> hey, I I realized something by the way, Kev. Oh no, what? So with with his ult, yeah, create two copies of Jace. They're copies at his current state. Yes, not his. Uh, they come out at one. Oh no, you're right. I think I would assume I that's think, how that I works. I think they do because they're not copies of. Well, that's my whole argument gone. <laughs> yeah. I, All right, no, Jace isn't going to be a modern. <laughs> yeah. Like that was my that was my quandary. I, so, okay, here's something that I do like about Jace even without the like infinite combo thing. Um 3 mana planeswalkers generally speaking have been fairly positive. Ashiok mm-hmm. is great. Uh Nissa Voice of Zendikar, I think, mm-hmm. is actually quite yeah, good. she's good. Um in the right deck, she's good. In the right deck, she's good. Yeah, yeah. Tybalt, I know it too. Even better than all of them. Um, Tybalt's better than everything but Stormcrow. Uh, he's up there with Stormcrow. Tybalt for me. is the second best <laughs> magic card ever. Right behind Stormcrow. Right behind Stormcrow. Getting bird poop all over him. Um, so, 
<laughs> I don't. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> he's but he's a hot devil. It'll like sizzle up before it hits and splats him in the face. Although he's wearing clothes, so that wouldn't work. Never mind. <laughs> I tried to physics my way into saying no one poops on Tibble, but it no uh, everyone poops on Tibble. This is a good episode. Um, that's the title. Everyone poops on Tibble. <laughs> If New you, shirt. If you're not sure who Dibbled is, we reference him a lot. Go look at that card. Tell yeah. me if you play. Okay, so yeah, that sort of wrecks my argument. Yeah, though, sorry. Like, I I mean, I think three mana planeswalkers generally are good, but like I, it's just not good enough. No. No, it's not. I don't think. I mean, it's interesting, right? Interesting, but it's not good enough. Um, yeah. This is kind of the worst, Jace. No, it's not the worst. The Living Guild pack was terrible. Worse than this? I don't, hang on. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. It's real bad. I need to... I hate oh, this God. Jace. Sorry if any of you really like this Jace, but it is bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, his ult's good. Um... <laughs> That's like saying any play. That's like Tabalt's ult is good. <laughs> Yes, it is. But <laughs> that's such I mean, a weird card. But no, yeah. I honestly think this is worse. Hear me out. What? So, no. Yeah. So he protects himself, sort of. He, he does. Well, he does get you two two. I yeah. like that. But his he goes to one for that. I don't know. His I mean, yeah. His plus bad. one comparatively is garbage. Hey, he dies to bolt, <laughs> like right off the, <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> Uh, oh. He and the tutu that he makes. <laughs> oh, anyway. Jeez. Oh, yeah. So without the doubling season, and we may be wrong on that, but I think you're correct. I'd... Um, fact check us. I don't know, but without the doubling season backing, I don't see it as anywhere. Even Man, close. we had such a cool animation for that. Just Jace's everywhere. Um, Are we? Oh man, if we were wrong last time, I'll feel real bad. Yeah, but we'll that's what bad. I'm thinking. I, I, I think you are probably correct. But again, I could be wrong. It's one of those weird things. I had an epiphany at work. Yeah. I was like doing some BS at work, whatever it was. And I was like, Jace comes out of one. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a weird out of body like, oh, oh no. Yeah. I've made a mistake. It still would be kind of cool just to do like get a few Jaces out off, af, off of doubling season. Because you do get to use it Yeah, once, you'd have but... you'd have five in that instance. Yeah him and then the four mm -hmm. and then i guess next turn they go back to three mm -hmm. it's just so bad it's just bad yeah all it's right not good enough all right <clears throat> sorry to the last card should have um, stayed on revnica dude yeah for real um this card actually will get played mm -hmm. without a doubt uh opt opt the most like underwhelming card we could have chosen for the last one but it is very good so yeah uh instant speed scry one then draw one for one blue. It's better than Serum there it Visions. Is. Deal with it. I think you're right. <clears throat> the fact that it's instant speed. And you get the scry before. Mm -hmm. Which means a lot. Um, instant really puts it over the edge for me. If this was yeah, a sorcery, sure. I honestly wouldn't think so. No, I don't think so. But I do think because it's the instant, mm -hmm. you definitely play yep, it. Yep, I agree. Because you can do it their end step. Mm -hmm. Does this question... I thought about this. Uh, does an awesome new cantrip like this uh, make Mentor any... <laughs> more attractive than modern uh i mean certainly a little bit but i don't think it's enough hmm. um i mean the the reason mentor is so good in the places that it is well, played is was. because was yeah hey it's still technically being played um which we were a little incorrect about really yeah um, people are playing one of mentors vintage super league people are still playing it one of mentors yeah wait was it it was in vintage yeah so mm -hmm. but yeah it's still being played um huh. i'm a little surprised the deck or is it just index i mean it's index but they're still called mentor yeah <laughs> weird right um what i mean you, it's good what if you don't get mentor on like the first three <laughs> turns <laughs> i mean you draw a lot in that deck so it makes sense um and then there's your fuel for mentor gone i don't like that at all i mean it's still played and it still does pretty well but I, the I'm reason mentor was so good was because it's being paired with free stuff yeah. <laughs> you just chain a bunch of free stuff or essentially free stuff yes. and then you get all these tokens this yeah it's cheap and it's good sure um and i do think it makes mentor a little bit more attractive but i don't know that it's enough to really get it going 
um, with the banning of Gitaxian Probe a while back. True. That was a big hit. Um, but there are still Ginormous good cards. Hit. I mean, in like a Esper control list, you could still run things like, you know, Dismember could theoretically cost mm -hmm. one. Uh, Surgical Extraction, it could cost zero. Um, yeah. You get a lot of Thoughtseize style effects, which are very cheap. Like, you've got a lot of cheap interactions. So maybe um, play some cheap counter spells mm -hmm. like Mana Leak and Remands and things like that. And sure. you could have a deck, but I don't know. It's just not at the same caliber, obviously, that that it would be in vintage. Well, so. of course not. Every card. Uh, that was a weird sentence I was about to say. I was going to say every card gets better in vintage because of its cli its climate, um. <laughs> which is both true and not true. So Hill it, Giant's so good. <laughs> it's Hill Giant's never good. It's <laughs> to bolt. <laughs> it's true because any combo possible is in vintage mm -hmm. so any card that benefits from it or helps it in any way like there you go but it's also not true in that there are better options yeah always always <laughs> there's always a better option always um but uh, i mean i think that is an interesting philosophy. question <laughs> yeah magic philosophy we'll do a philosophy episode yeah. i was wrong though that's a dumb thing to say um but i do think you know you're gonna play this over serum visions 100 mm. percent um i do think people will still be playing serum visions but the thing that I like about this is um, you get to scry, then you get to draw, which gives you a better chance of a good card. Right. You do it at the end step of your opponent's turn, so <laughs> that leaves you open to countering their things, which is just better. Um, I was going to make a point mm. about uh, fetch lands, but that actually works better with Serum Visions. Um, I was going to say you could shuffle, but you have to draw right after the scry. You can't do it in the middle, so that doesn't work. Right. Um, <laughs> right. That would be funny, though, if you could. I'm going to interrupt this spell in the middle of it. I'm going to fetch. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. It would be pretty funny. But no, that works with Serum Visions, technically. But, you know. I mean, it works after, right? Yeah, but you yeah. Serum Visions, then you do that, and then you right. hopefully if you don't get a like better draw. Scryed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Brainstorm's better, obviously. Duh. Just brainstorm. Brainstorm's better than Ock. Brainstorm <laughs> is the best card ever. Third best. Storm crow to ball, say. then brainstorm. <laughs> you just um, like this game. There are uh, two cards clearly better. But yeah, I mean we're definitely anyway. gonna see opt in modern. I don't think there's a question about mm -hmm. that. So um overall though, final point I wanted to make about this before we wrapped it up. Yeah. Um Ixalon looks like a very exciting, fun standard uh set. Set. Very thematic set. Yes, thematic, gorgeous. Uh, it's going to be very fun to play limited, very fun to get with constructed stuff. That being said, this is probably, in recent memory, the weakest Eternal set, I would say. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I think Eternal that there formats. were there were far more things in Amonkhet and Hours. That... What hit Eternal formats from Amonkhet and Hours, though? You got your excavator more so amonkhet your excavator your vizier uh yeah. you got there's a spell there's an instant spell that got me here. i don't remember. a braid did a braid get i don't i don't know i wouldn't be shocked but i'm not sure yeah um there <laughs> was uh sweltering suns went in yeah a lot of the cyclers yeah a lot of the cyclers went in living Censor. end Censor. um there's one that's like on the, the top of my brain the top of it yeah just the tippy tip top <laughs> i don't remember what it's called but there was plenty that just felt natural right? yeah sure um i think the fact that we are over here having like debates about eh, 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 i don't know uh just shows that i think you're right not. like there's just not too much here for eternal mm -hmm. formats i mean the cards are cool it's a right. cool looking set it's a fairly powerful looking set on the creature end of things i think mm -hmm. um so I think, you know, it's probably going to make for a great standard set. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other absolutely. than that, we're really not getting much out of no. it. I don't think um, you eternal players out there. Yeah. That being said, we have not played with this yet. Yeah. You um, could be completely wrong. And we have not, like, corroborated with any professional players. So. And all of this being said, Commander had a field day with this set. Oh. Commander um, just. Oh, my gosh. And the past three sets just feel like. Uh, like here, Commander players. Yeah, like you line up, a bunch of you stuff. line up all the formats as your children. Be your standard, be your modern, <laughs> be your Commander. It's like being King's Dad. 
It's like being the favorite child on Christmas Day. Honestly, yes. <laughs> um, commander being the favorite child, everybody so else. So much for the vampire commander who comes out of this set. <laughs> Gobs. Yes. Gobs of it. You were definitely correct. Uh, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty stacked for commander. But mm-hmm. yeah, other eternal formats. Sorry. We uh we missed it on this. I'm one. open to being wrong, but I'm just I'm kind of skeptical. Not to say it's a bad set, but just it's like a it's a very time specific, timely. There's a word for that. Timely. Oh yeah. And once its that. time is gone, we will forget it. <laughs> More like it's a gone. <laughs> oh god. All the jokes. They should have cast you and it. Stop. And just like second. had you walk on your knees the entire time I'd so you match the height i'd have been there i don't care who i played you ride the bike with your knee I'd have... <laughs> i have two bikes hi guys <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> taped together oh, God. i'm not that big what am i saying <laughs> 5 11 uh all right we'll just get a bigger bike <laughs> Uh, we're having fun this episode. <laughs> it's probably way more fun for us. Sorry. Ooh, Enjoy fun. it anyway. Um, oh, all right. So geez. any other uh, modern hits that we wanted to talk about? No, I don't think so. No dinosaurs unless they really force it in the next Man. set and then in the future probably won't ever touch. Well, Not I mean, dinosaurs. that being said, Zoo might want to play some dinosaurs. Some are cool. They're good, but they like, cost yes. too much, right? I mean, for the most part, yeah. Wild, how much does Wild Nicole cost? She's four, right? One. <laughs> Wild Nicole's. Oh, she's. Yeah. Who am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of Rubble mean? Belt Raiders. Never mind. <laughs> I don't play that. Too. <laughs> what a great modern card. Yeah, I was like, what's that card that always goes in Zoo? <laughs> Wild Nicole's the card. It's the one I said, but the one in my head was Rubble Belt Raiders. What a mess. We're going to move off of this now. I yeah, think. no more I want to say about Ixlon. Uh, um, it'll be yeah. fun to play. But it'll be yeah. an interesting set. It does look quite good. Um, literally, mm. it art-wise, it looks oh, great. Oh, God, yeah, it's um, gorgeous. I want to hang some of these in my house. Yeah. I do, they're great, they're just, pretty. Yeah. As, like, posters, not just... Just <laughs> hanging them in your house. <laughs> just, like, turning slowly. <laughs> like <laughs> Put them on strings. <laughs> One on a fan. <laughs> Oh All right. This has gone so far down. Um, All the harpies can go on my fan. <laughs> Woo! All right. Moving on to our question of the week. Uh, right. This past week, we asked all of you guys, uh, last one. what do you think the best set in Magic history mm-hmm, is? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, and notice mm-hmm, we said mm-hmm. best, not favorite. We had a few people still comment their favorite. That's okay. Um, but mean, we were looking for sort of like playing limited. What was the best set? That was sort of the idea, I think. Um, But I think altogether, it sort of encompassed also how did the set, how was, how stacked was the set? How did the set feel thematically? How good was it lore wise? How good was it? So all these things were sort of implied. Well, Um, my favorite was also what I thought was the best. So, and what is that? Innistrad. Yeah. Innistrad. Um, Innistrad didn't win. Okay. It's fine. Let's do it because we haven't done this in a while. You get to guess. All right. <clears throat> I will say we're gonna go third, second, first. Okay. Third had two uh, sets in it. Uh, second, there were three sets, and then first there was only one. So what do you think? Uh, what were the two sets that made it? What do you mean? Into you mean third votes? Place? Are you trying yeah, to say votes? votes? Excuse okay. me. Okay. I think in third place. Yeah. This is weird for me. Third place. I want to guess. Yeah. Scars. Of uh, not close, but no. Okay. The uh, second place I think is Innistrad. Um, first place. We're doing just third. Give me the two sets that got third. Oh, wait a minute. There were two sets that were voted on. I, mis- I misunderstood got, you. That both got Pardon two me. votes. Pardon me. I misunderstood. God, get it right. I thought you switched in your brain the word sets and votes. So I thought no. third got. Shut up, Will. Third place got two votes each, and there were two winners for third. Okay, in that case, well, I already voted Scars. So, my second... Huh. I don't know, dude. This is going to be an interesting reveal for you, because it... Maybe Phyrexia? New Phyrexia? New Phyrexia. W- what's that set's name? New Phyrexia. <laughs> there was no Phyrexia, right? I'm not crazy. No. Good. No, no, you're good. Good. 
those Rex those Rex. are your third place yeah do you want me to tell you the third before yeah. we move to the Absolutely. second yes help all right so you were close on one it's not mm. scars of mirrodin but mirrodin original mm. uh, I mean, was third sure and iconic masters also are we doing the turtle ones too i guess <laughs> so uh okay i don't know yeah. i thought there was just a small group of people that played iconic masters but it's hey, an awesome set it is an awesome set uh Righteous so yeah set well we'll move into second place and there were three sets all of all of which got three votes each and it's Tron's one okay um Oddly enough, I'm going to go out on the limb and say Ice Age. Okay. Wow, really? Yeah, Ice Age was fun. Okay. Looking back on it, I didn't play it. But <laughs> I was going to say. It's regarded warmly, though, ironically. <laughs> right? I think everyone likes Ice Age. I think. Um, it was a cool set. Yeah. Ice Age. Um, <laughs> it's. Oh, God. Uh, ba 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 da, uh, da, da. I I don't know. I give up. I don't, I'm not. You sure. give up? I'm not sure. Um, give me any set. I'm I'm super like. Ugh, ugh. You can do it. Just oh, any wait, set. Her- any modern masters? Maybe. Pick a set. The first one. First modern masters. Uh no. <laughs> you were right about Innistrad. Was I? Okay. Yeah. Uh Urza's saga. I wanted to say Ur- Urza's legacy. Yeah. Honestly. It was after, a good block. So. I, after it was a great block, and after Ice Age, I was like, "What other old yeah. sets are good?" Oh, Earth, close. Yeah, you were close. Uh, and then New Phyrexia got second. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um. So, huh. first place, there was only one winner. They got five votes. What do you think? Theros. Just kidding. <laughs> there was um, somebody who voted for Theros. That's fine. It can be your favorite. I. Yeah. Um. It looked pretty. That it did. That it did. <laughs> uh, what got first place? I like that this was first place. Is it a newer one? I Is mean, it's not like... It's modern card frame. Modern card frame? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, then it's not... But it's not like in the past few years. It's not what I, would, what I was thinking then. Um, whew. I don't know. Um, Dark Ascension. That was a great set. Uh, no. <laughs> it was a great set. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lorwyn actually got first. Yeah. I liked okay. Lorwyn. So, okay. first of all, the Lorwyn art of that cool. set was very unique in a That's very true. cool way. Um, yeah. had a lot of tribal stuff, which mm-hmm. was awesome. Fairies. Um, That's true. stuff like that. So, there was a lot of really cool stuff in that set. So, mm-hmm. it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, okay. I didn't play during Lorwyn, um, so I can't I comment like on the limited format, but I do think thematically it was a great set. Mm-hmm. So it makes lots sense hi- to me. I would game. have thought Innistrad would have won. Uh, just based on popular opinion, I think the majority, if we sample-sized a large group, I think the majority would say Innistrad. Just personal opinion, but I think that's just generally the consensus, yeah. right? Like uh, Other so. votes, we did have uh, Shadows over Innistrad got a vote. Uh, time spiral which is awesome alpha <laughs> um future sight cons of tarkir alpha mm. was the strongest <laughs> yeah well uh m15 uh modern masters 2017 return to ravnica <laughs> wait 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 m15 the core set yeah all right there's cool. a few of these i'm a little unsure of uh, continue continue return continue. to ravnica also unsure of theros unsure of world wake and zendikar uh Ixalan. Oh, Zendikar would have hmm, Zendikar was lots of fun. Yeah. Uh Shadow Moor and Betrayers of Kamigawa. Interestingly enough, original mm. Modern Masters didn't get any votes, which I think limited wise, it was one of the best playing sets ever. I mean it's an eternal yeah. it's a you know master set, so there was no like there were themes in the way of like limited themes, but there wasn't like an actual story to it. So I get that it may not have been the best set for that reason. Yeah. But like playability. I mean, come on. That set is, like, perfect. <laughs> like, um, so, uh, that rounds out this uh, this past week's question of the week. This week, we're going to move to what is the best block as a whole. So, obviously, last week, it was just sets. We did have a few people that wanted to do uh, the full blocks, and they had some ideas for it. So, 
we will be doing that this coming week. Okay. Uh, I think my answer stays the same. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. Like, uh, and this does rule out master sets and things like that. This blocks only. So uh, we'll see what you guys have to say. The support on the last question was fantastic. So thank you guys all for supporting and, and sort of commenting on that. Uh, and comment this week. Yeah. All the good stuff. Um, With that. Moving to our last thing. As always, every single episode sponsored by Grand Slam, our Ooh. local, friendly, fantastic card shop uh, here in South Carolina. Yeah. You want a cat token? A little. Uh, oh, we have gold cards we're that. trying to open with these packs. What? Oh, I got it. We have been in hours for so long. Very soon we won't be, thank the Lord. I'm so tired of this. Uh, <laughs> ours is a set that I really liked on the face of it and then got real tired of it real quick. Like, <laughs> I just, like, it's not that exciting anymore. Um, no. Sorry, guys. It's not. It's just not. Uh, we do have gold mm. cards. What'd you say yours was? Um, mine is still that stupid that torment. torment. Um, mine is Fraying Sanity. I don't think either of us got Our ours. Sanity. No, I got a crabby, crabby, crabby rare. I got... What's his name again? Jeru. Jeru. Gerald. Hey, buddy. What's hey, up? Gerald. You know who you are. He doesn't watch this. Um, I mean, I'm gonna pick Gerald because it's just a good card. But like, yeah. there's not much else in this pack either, mm -hmm. to be honest. So yeah, I would pick Gerald. Um, I picture the seal from Finding Dory. <laughs> Get off our rock, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald. 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 Um, yeah, my rare was Abandoned Sarcophagus. So good. <laughs> hmm. Um, so I'm going to pick Burning Fist Minotaur. Uh, that card is actually real sweet. Yeah, there's really not else, not much else. These packs weren't too good, were they? No, Sun Scourge is like my only other. Uh, Sun Scourge is pretty good. I like that card. Yeah, it's fine. Um, White's pretty good also. Mm -hmm. White Red actually is pretty good. <laughs> well, I like my Minotaur. I know you do. My Bury the Fire first strike two one minotaur that you can fire breathe yeah breathe, what it has? breathe the fire yeah breathe the fire um all right well very soon we will be out of hours and in into exelon that day cannot come quick enough. i know um i talked to clamp over at grand slam about it recently so he said he'd let me know but uh yeah guys thank you so much for your support on this episode and all of the previous episodes thank you to grand slam for sponsoring us uh, we do appreciate it. And then lastly, a little shout out again to Project Peanuts for yes. taking part. Uh, all of you who took part in the giveaway, we do appreciate your support. We have more to come. Uh, much so love. Much love. Yeah, much love. Um, Sweet. That being said, I think that's going to finish out our episode. I don't think there was anything else we wanted to talk about. Uh, no. Go past. Do you want to rant on it anymore? Are you good? Don't get me going. Don't get me started. <laughs> Is that real enough for you? Good. <laughs> oh, i love it uh guys we are gonna get out of here my name is kevin my name is will and this has been it resolves